sun and CO2 to make glucose, the sugar that they use for food. They also put oxygen into the air so we can share because oxygen is everywhere. If I were to tell you that there are camels that have humps, there are trees that climb other trees, you might see them here. These are these things that are hanging off them, are the different trees that actually climb this tree. And there are actually plant like organisms, there's plant like organisms that use chemicals to produce food, not sunlight. Usually all plants produce, use sunlight, these use chemicals. If I were to tell you that this is actually a fact, and then I were to ask, you know, why is this, why is this happening? Why do these different organisms have these adaptations? What you might tell me is, I, you know, I could give you that answer if you tell me what kind of environment they live in. And that would be a very good answer because the actual dot point says identify some adaptations of living things to factors in their environment. So this that dot point is all about that. It's saying, you know, you should have know the adaptations, but know why as well. So how the adaptations are linked to the environment they live in. That's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to cover these three examples and relate that to environment. So why do you have these adaptations? Because they live in certain environments. For example, we mentioned these here. These are the plants that use chemicals to produce their food. So they produce, use chemicals to produce food. Now you might, again, you might ask, you know, why don't they use sunlight like all other different plants? So why don't they use the sun to be able to produce their food? And yeah, these don't. And the reason why is because this is their environment. Here we have a deep sea, deep sea vent. This comes actually from underground, so under the volcanoes. The erupt, and there are these hot lava coming into the ocean. And with the actual hot lava, there's also lots of sulfur. And this is what I mean by the chemicals. They often use sulfur to produce their energy. But as you can see, there's absolutely no light. So there's actually no light under so far under the ocean. It's deep sea, so there's no light. Which means if you want to have plants surviving there, they won't get any sunlight. So you have to have a different way to be able to produce their food. And what they do instead is they get, use these sulfur compounds which have lots of different energy and they can use that energy to make food. So that's why these plants have the adaptation of using, they're actually called, so it was photosynthesis. Photosynthesis was a word for plants that use f sunlight to produce food. Photo meant sun or sun ray and synthesis means make. So they use sun to make food. Whereas these guys are actually chemo synthesis. They make chemosynthesis as opposed to photosynthesis. And it's the same thing, same, it's a very similar procedure, except they don't use, they don't use the energy from the sun, but they use the energy from chemo, so from chemicals. But yeah, now we've just explained the adaptation. So the fact that they can do chemosynthesis, which is a physiological adaptation. So it's physiological. And the reason why it's physiological is because it happens inside their body. It's not structural or behavioral, it's physiological. And the reason why they have an adaptation is to be able to actually get energy, make their own food, because otherwise they wouldn't be able to survive. And they can't use sunlight because they have no sunlight. And the other question I had is, you know, why are there trees that climb other trees? These trees, these small figs here, we actually we call them figs in this example. They're figs. So why do these figs exist? Why would they climb trees? And the reason why is because their usual habitat, the usual environment they live in, is the jungle. And as you can see here, it's very crowded. So it's very crowded, which means there's not much space and there's also not much sunlight. And all plants want sunlight. So there's a lack of sunlight, which would be really bad for the actual survival of the figs. So what they do is they can actually climb trees. They can climb really big trees. This tree is quite tall. They can climb even taller trees. So they're good climbers. What it helps them to do is it helps them to get all the way to the top. And then when they're on the top, so I'll just draw a tree here, one tree, bad attempt at a tree, sorry about that. And then this climber, which I'll just do in yellow. Eventually he gets to the top. And then when he's at the top, he'll produce his leaves. And leaves obviously need sunlight. And because they're at the top, they're gonna get enough sunlight to be able to do photosynthesis. So the reason why you know these trees have the adaptation to be able to climb properly is because they live in an environment that has no sunlight because it's so crowded and there's little sunlight left for the, especially if you're on the bottom, you don't want to be in the bottom, you want to be on top. And by climbing trees, they can get to the top. So that's what that adaptation was all about. Obviously this example, I mean, the next one you might actually have known 
generally because it's maybe a quite general example, the camel. So we said the camel has a hump. And why might it have a hump? Well, this here is the environment it lives in. And it obviously looks very deserty because they, they often live in the desert. Even in Australia, all the camels we have live very much in the desert. And the problem with the desert is there's very little water. So you can see there will be a very little water. And any water that you have quickly evaporates. So what camels do, camels tend to know places that have their small ponds of water. So they might be able to go there a couple times a month. And what they can do then is they can drink a lot. So they are drinking machines. So they drink a lot at one time. And then they use that hump. And you can imagine the hump is filled full of water. So lots of water in here. And then they use that water over the space of a couple of weeks to not die, more or less. So that adaptations allows us to be able to survive the desert because in the desert there's no water. And without water they would die. So they would drink a while when they can find water, they drink as much as they can and they have a storage in their hump. So I go over the open it says it says identify some adaptations of living things to factors in their environment. So these were some of the ones. So we mentioned the plants live in the deep sea, the fact that they may do chemosynthesis and not photosynthesis because they have no sunlight. So you couldn't use the energy from the sun. You have to use the energy from the actual chemicals instead. We said that the figs, which often live in rainforests or jungles, they have very little sunlight because there's very little sunlight in the rainforest. So what they can do is they can just climb a big tree and then make the leaves reappear on top. And that means they actually, their leaves will get enough sunlight. And then we also said the desert camel, it has a huge hump be able to store water. So it's there's little water in the desert. So if it can find a pond of water, it'll drink as much as it can, have a storage for a couple of weeks, and then until it finds the next pond, and drink all that again. So for this, even if you get, make sure to always, obviously, in class, you know, you'll get more examples. Make sure you remember those examples as well. But yeah, for this, you need to be able to not just identify the adaptations, but why it has these adaptations. So we'll link it back to the environment they live in. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.